How's it going, buddy? Welcome back to Elves Drunks and Reviews. Today, we're looking at another Atherin Raider Roll product. We are looking at an Atherin Raider Roll Atherton Topeka and Santa Fe EMD ST39U number 1568. We're not going to waste any time. There it is in its box. And we're going to just open her up. And as you see on the box, it says DCC Sound Ready, as we usually do. So, here it is. What the heck is that? This is like some dead plastic. We're going to lift it out of its box here if I can actually attempt to here. There we go. Inside our box, we have our exploded diagram. The warranty just fell out. Here is our exploded diagram. There it is. And it's actually kind of big, too. It appears there's two pieces of paper. Oh, does it actually? I think it does. Oh, it does. Wow, that's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff. That is <laughs> not even funny. Okay, so that's quite the exploded diagram, I have to say. And anyway, the warranty kind of popped out of there. And then as we, as usual, sign up for the after news thing. We don't hold on to that, though, because I don't like those. I think it's kind of stupid. Anyway, here she is in her box. Just going to slide that plastic blister package off. There we go. Toss that to the side. That was actually louder than I thought. We have some more additional pieces. Uh, if you wanted to glue them on, you can. There's also another bag in here which has air compressors and some um, air conditioning units that would go like on the roof of the locomotive. So we have those extras. We have a piece of foam on top. Move that here. Let's open up the clam shell. There it is. Inside of its pretty little clam shell box. Let's pull it out. Put the locomotive down here. Let's grab that clam shell and just move it off to the side here without having any issues. And we have some foam keeping the handrails from bending in on themselves and breaking them, which is a very good thing. Oh, come on. And just like that, the locomotive is out. All right, let's get into some history. All right, now onto some history. The EMD SD39 was a six axle diesel electric locomotive built between 1968 and 1970. Out of the 54 that were built, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe bought 20 of these locomotives. In the mid-1980s, the Santa Fe decided to upgrade and extend the lives of their SD39 fleet. Beginning in 1985, these units were remanufactured by their San Bernardino shops and reclassified as SD39Us. They were renumbered into the 1556 to 1575 number class and were designated as heavy switchers. The upgrades included updated wiring, new controls for hump service, and completely rebuilt engines. They were assigned to the Barstow and Argentine yards, but could be found roaming the system. When in switching service, they were mated to rebuilt six-axle slugs when it came to using them in hump service. Now, our locomotive here, number 1568, was built in June of night. Sorry, July. Yes, yes, June in 1969, and renumbered, and it was originally numbered as 4016. But it was rebuilt in January of 1986 and became number 1568 here. Well, after the merger between the Burlington Northern and the Santa Fe in 1995, it became BNSF 6212, and then later was renumbered to 1922, and then it became LTEX 1922, and I can only assume that in 2016, or after 2016, it was scrapped because no other images of it exist. Alright, so now let's get on to the detail, starting with the front. All right, so we're currently at the front of the locomotive, and like I said in the history uh, portion, this locomotive was rebuilt in 1986. And I will also point out those feet, those differences, or the changes as we move along. Starting off here at the front, at the top as we go, for, as usually, we have our lovely Leslie RS3L horn, which is the, my personal favorite horn of all time. Well, here we have the number boards, which I do believe they do uh, light up if they, if you have if the locomotive is in motion, I'm not sure. I, have to, I haven't actually put this thing on the track yet. Here is where the, this is where the headlight used to be. But uh, after crew testimonial, they discovered that a lot of glare happened at night. So they moved it down here to the nose to reduce that glare problem. Anyway, we have separately applied windshield wipers. One here, there's a combo one right here and one right there. You can see the door right here. It does not open, unfortunately. I wish it would. That would honestly be really cool if it did. On the top of the nose, we have a grab iron, which you can just see right here. And then this is the sand filler hatch right here, just above the light. And as you see, here is our headlight, which does operate when the locomotive is in motion. We have our iconic Santa Fe 
uh, front shield logo, whatever it is. I'm not, it's not a shield, but it's a band of sorts. We also have two grab irons just underneath the lettering here, one here and one here. Right down here is, there is the uh, walkway light along with some uh, openings for like hatches, I believe. If we, if we zoom in, if we focus here on the front of the locomotive, exactly, here we have our walkway um, handrails and chain right here. This uh, big stand here is for a hookup to the, uh, the yard slugs that these would be paired up with in Barstow and Argentine. We have another smaller hookup uh, outlet right here. Here is a little walkway to cross to another locomotive. We have our, our separately applied coupler cup bar just right here. Here is our coupler right here. We have some EMU hoses right here, three on each side. And here is our air brake hose. Okay, so now let's look at the back. All right, looking at the rear of the locomotive here, we have a sand filler hatch right here at the top of the locomotive. We have some grab irons that go from the top down to the bottom. Here is our rear headlight, which does activate when the locomotive is in motion. Here you can see the old number boards right here that uh, were covered over. And speaking of numbers, here is the number right there. We have old class lights right here, which were also covered over. And you can see this is the brake handle. Now you're kind of, it's a little interesting that they decided to put it here as opposed to on the side or on the, on the nose of the locomotive but it is there. Here we have a, another grab iron right here. There is no walkway light, unfortunately, oops, because the brake wheel um, is covering that. Here is our, our handrails as well as the hand chain. There is our EMU outlet for the slugs, one right there and one right there, whoopsie poopsies. Here is our uh, coupler, here's our coupler right here and our, um, our coupler cut lever, which is extends the width of the locomotive, whoops. Here are EMU hoses, three on either side, just like the front, and there is our brake hose as well. Okay, so now let's look at the side. All right, so now we're looking at the side of the locomotive on the conductor side, and right off the bat, uh, you can see that grab iron that I did mention earlier. There it is, right there. Now, moving down here to the actual uh, cab part, you can see what my biggest issue with this, with this locomotive, and there are the wires. Uh, to the lights and I think that's a bit of a downside the fact that you can see them through the cab and I think that's not that's kind of poor but anyway moving down here you can see a bit a little a small f indicating that this is the front of the locomotive we have a uh, gear ratio just below the battery box compartments right here when they do not open unfortunately on the on just underneath the window here is the number 1568 and this is a vent of sorts i'm actually had to look at the um the diagram the pop-up diagram to figure out what that was and according to the diagram it calls it a cab vent rectangular now here we go we have some more we have some illegible writing right here that i cannot read unfortunately and here is our silver trucks which look very nice and right there is a little emd logo which i thought is really really cool right here is our bell and here is our blower uh, do not, if somebody could please explain to me what the blower does, I would really appreciate it. Right above the blower is the inertial intake grill. And let, as we move the locomotive forward here, here is our fuel tank area. So there is our fuel tank, and here is the air tank reservoir, and there is our lovely Santa Fe. Right here is the dynamic brake housing area right here for the vents and the uh, cooling system. As we move the locomotive further, as you can see here, we have only two radiators as opposed to the SD40-2. The base of the SD39 is just a smaller version of the SD40 and the SD40-2 with a little bit less horsepower, but these things were still powerful nonetheless. And here's actually a fun thing. Uh, Santa Fe did this, and I think this was very unique. On the driver's side of the locomotive, look there. There is a spare knuckle. And as well as on the other a truck, there's the other spare knuckle. So I thought that was very unique as opposed to putting them on the rear of the locomotive. All right, so now let's look at the roof. All right, so we're currently looking at the top of the locomotive here, the roof of the cab here. Here is our lovely Leslie RS3L. And in this little gap here, you could put that AC unit if you wanted to, if you wanted to glue that on. You actually have two of those in case you lose one of them, which is really cool. Here is our Sinclair antenna, which is on top of a stand of sorts, as well as here's a wire right here. As we move the locomotive forward, here is our dust bin, dust bin hatch right here, which I guess collects dust. And here is our exhaust for the locomotive's uh, prime mover. As we move the locomotive forward, here is the dynamic brake fan area. And as we keep moving the locomotive forward, here are the radiator fans for the actual local engine. And here is a grab iron, which is called the, 
fan grab curve, which I kind of find a little funny. Okay, so let us get into my final thoughts. So if you're big into the Santa Fe and you're also big into the Santa Fe during the late, the mid to late 80s, this and you like doing yard service, this locomotive is the right locomotive for you. Now, I only really had uh, one downside with this locomotive, and that was the wires inside the inside uh, being visible inside the cab. So I definitely had to take points off of that. So I have to give this an A minus. But apart from that, there was no other problems I had with this locomotive, and it looks phenomenal. I couldn't find any paint blemishes or scrapes or anything. So I highly recommend you get one of these. I got the, my locomotive at Midwest Model Railroad uh, for a very good price and for good shipping and very, very good shipping and very good shipping price. But anyway, I highly recommend you get one. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button. Also subscribe if you have not. And uh, hit the notification bell to know when I upload. I upload on Mondays and Fridays at 9 a.m. So uh, tune in on those days when I do. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.